Okay, we'll take a quick look at what information you should consider capturing if you're troubleshooting either the DBS-210 or the DBS-110 deck unit, base station to be specific. So the first item I start off with is taking a screenshot at the home status page we're at right now. This will show us what current version we have on a base station. As of this recording of the video, I have the latest version 5-01-01. You may also see it listed as 5.1.1, which is fine. The other thing also you want to export is the status at the bottom here. Next page, we're going to go to extensions. Okay, and if you can see, I have one of the deck handsets registered. It also has 5-01. That's zero one firmware. And then we can also, so this is another item you want to take a screenshot with. Um, you can uh, use Microsoft SNP. There's also some open source stuff to take uh, screenshots, uh, GreenShot, and a lot of other applications, so whatever works for you. Then, again, go ahead and take a screenshot of this page. We're going to go to the actual unit itself. And then we want to kind of take another screenshot of this information right here. By the way, this is functioning just fine in my lab. I'm just kind of showing a, an example of items to consider capturing if you need to troubleshoot. So currently I have mine registered to a open source free PBX server in the lab. Very simple registration. So that's my server. And again, you want to go ahead and capture this information, top half bottom half and then we're going to go to the network section I'm just doing DHCP so you want to capture this information also top half bottom half actually in this case one capture is fine for my resolution of screen we're going to go to management and by the way most of this information is default so really the only changes I've made registering the 6825 deck handset to the base station which then allows it to register to the SIP server. So we want to capture this information top half, bottom half, and we're going to go to the firmware update. Generally the unless you're having problems with the firmware update, this information really does not need to be captured because it's assuming you have the latest firmware. If you don't this shows exactly the way I updated my unit. I have a local PC with TFTP D64. That's the dot .33 PC you see right here. This is the folder where I unzip the actual firmware to. And you do have to present it in this type of format where the TFTP server is typically pointing to a root folder. Then the firmware binaries will be in a subfolder or child folder. And for this product, this is really critical that you kind of use the pattern I'm showing here. And then we do need to update or we do need to specify what is the update versioning for the base station. So in this case, it's 501. And then the required branch is 107. The 6825, I did not need to update because I had used it with other base stations, which it already was updated. But this kind of gives you the idea as far as the nomenclature of the numbering for this version of firmware. Okay, other information you may want to capture, country time settings. I have this pointing to a NTP server and internet. And this will be really just one screenshot, security. Okay, and then you can take screenshots top half, bottom half here. I'm not doing any type of uh, LDAP or anything like that. So unless you're troubleshooting something related to a directory, if you will, you most likely would not to take a screenshot of this page. I am just doing one base station, so I'm not doing multi-cell. However, if you are doing a multi-cell deployment, multiple base stations, you definitely want to capture this information. Generally, this information you don't need to capture unless you're troubleshooting something with the star codes. Likewise, generally, you do not need to capture this information unless you're troubleshooting something we call progress tones. 
I've not modified anything here as far as dial planes. If you notice, it's empty. So unless you're doing something custom or troubleshooting with dial plans, you may not need to capture this screen. Um, unless you're using repeaters, in this case I am not, you may not need to capture anything here. Likewise for the alarm. Okay, statistics. Okay, so here we definitely want to export the statistics. And this will show you basically system statistics, call statistics. So I made two test calls. When you export it, all three of these categories are exported. And I don't have any repeaters. Okay, so general statistics. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and t take a look at this. We do want to take screenshots of this. So it looks like this may require three individual screenshots. So this shows you the actual DEC wireless statistics. I just have one base station in my lab deployment with one 6825 DEC phone. So this will kind of show you what the statistics said. Performance is really good. So if you are having performance issues, you can kind of do a comparative analysis to what I'm seeing on the screen here. Kind of scroll down a little bit more. But again, you do want to get screenshots of this as soon as possible if you do run into any type of issues. So this will probably require at least maybe three to four different screenshots. Next one we're going to go is to diagnostics. And then um, here if we go to logging. Okay, so I did modify a number of things here. So where it says RSX internal tracing, I enabled that. For the PCAP internal tracing, I went ahead and enabled all the check marks you see here. If you're working with somebody uh, from a tech support department and they're working uh, with sustaining and development team and they have specific instructions for you as far as if they want a specific pattern of check marks and or values change, you definitely want to follow that. I'm just showing kind of a general starting point what you may want to consider as a starting point, and then if you're told otherwise, instruct otherwise, you want to follow that. And then here, once you enable all of these, you're going to hit save. I've already done that. In this case, to download the traces, I'm just going to do all base stations. Even though I have one, just as a good practice, I'm going to do all base stations. So this will gather the information, the logs and other information from all the base stations have had multiple units. In this case, I only have one, and it's just going to grab information from the one base station. This take may take a, a little bit of time. It says gathering, and I'm just going to call this a test. But if you were having a specific symptom, you would want to document it right here. Okay, so it kind of packages it up in a nice zip file, so you can hand it over to the tech support folks you're working with configuration here. Um, this is another one you definitely want to export. So we want to go in and export that. And then the other one is going to be for the handset itself. So we can go ahead and, okay, so if you can see here, handset config file is not shown here as the parameters are not saved in the base station. The parameters are forwarded directly to the handset. Handset is not registered. Config parameters will not be set in the non-registered handset. Max size of handset file is okay. So just some general notes, but in any case, from the base station page, we want to go in and export that information. And this, generally most telephony equipment, unless otherwise noted, noted it's typically done in an XML format. So it's fairly um, easily readable, uh, human readable, if you will. And that's pretty much common with most telephony products. So I'll kind of scroll down a little bit more so you can kind of see towards the bottom. Again, for my deployment, it is simple as possible. One SIP server, one 210 base station, and one DEC 6825 phone, just as an example. The next one's going to be syslog. So um, if, if you recall in one of the other pages, I did have syslog configured for the actual base station to be automatically sending this to a syslog server, and I'll show you in a moment. But in this case, uh, let's assume you don't have the base station configured to point to a syslog server to send messages. Here we will do an export. The one key reason why you would want to point a device to 
a syslog server. In this case, we're talking about a base station, but this can apply to other devices, switches, routers, access points, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, is typically there's a finite of memory on that respective device. And if the issue you're troubleshooting is intermittent and or random, meaning it may take hours, days, or weeks for the issue to pop up again, you definitely want to point the device to a syslog server if possible. And that's what I've done in this case. If for some reason you cannot do that, you would want to try to download all this information I'm showing right now as soon as the issue occurs. So you want to either educate somebody or be prepared yourself to do it as soon as possible because the amount of information the unit can hold, especially if it's doing a lot of transactions, a lot of phone usage can be very short. So you don't want that information lost and overwritten. And then the last one's gonna be the SIP log itself. So if we go towards the bottom here, we can also export that, okay? And then if we go back to the management section actually, if you notice, I mentioned a few moments ago about um, syslog slash SIP log, and that's where I'm actually pointing to a local PC that's running TFTP D64 configured as a mini syslog server, but it's just an app, a very simple setup. And I'm telling it to upload the SIP log messages. The syslog, I'm enabling debug level, so that's very critical. It is just on a local network, so I'm not doing any type of TLS. The IP address of the syslog server, 192.168.1.33. And then I'm just using the default port, which is 514. So then if we go to the actual syslog server, so this app is TFTP D64. It offers a number of different functions. I'm using it specifically for syslog right now. So basically what I ended up doing is within the app itself, if you hit settings, you'll get this child window. And then you basically want to enable forward message to pipe TFTP D32S, or excuse me, syslog. So the operating system is going to forward those messages to this app. And then we want to save those syslog messages to a local file. In this case, I have it as C drive backslash syslog backslash, and then the name of this syslog, I'm calling dbs210syslog.txt. So if we go to our folder here, you'll notice I have a text file under C drive syslog that is listed as the dbs210syslog. So if we double click the fella, you'll be able to see the messages that are being logged here. So I did some test calls here some additional test calls, and there's some other syslog messages, some additional test calls. And so if we go back here, so the key items really are we want to make sure the debug log, so SIP debug log, syslog, settings, all traces, BS, base stations, the st status or statistics. Those are some of the key things we want to make sure we're downloading from the DBS 210 base station. And one thing to keep in mind is depending on how you're deploying the DBS 210 and or DBS 110, there may be circumstances where you do not have admin access to the actual base station. So in this example, I'm running this in my lab. I'm registering it directly to a local SIP server. However, if you're doing it with an online service, the actual admin account might be machine generated and locked, meaning you may not have access. In those circumstances, you wanna work with the respective tech support and or service provider, uh, tech support department to figure out what method they would like to, like you to use to be able to pull this information from the actual base station for troubleshooting. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully this helps you as far as what information and how to collect information from the DBS 210 slash 110 base stations. Thank you.